glad you're here tonight. This is awesome. We have a great crowd. And you braved the streets of Seattle, even though we don't have snow, and it's not 20 below. But thank you for being here. This is a couple, actually less than two weeks before Christmas. So this is a fun treat we have. Instead of our usual lecture, didactic medical stuff, we have some really fun, interesting things about shape and dressing and kind of feeling good about yourself. And we have a, a kind of a packed evening. It's going to start off with uh, one presentation. We have a bunch of close up here. We're going to have a quick changeover to another presenter and a mini runway. Can you believe it? It's right there. Uh, sorry, no music. And uh, then actually a presentation. They'll be hand out some times for questions at the end. We're going to pass out some babies in the back. There's a little um, basket with uh, blank pieces of paper and pens. If you want to pass that around, if everyone wants to put their name on a piece of paper, at the end of the event, we're going to have a drawing for a special prize. Keeps you excited. So, um, so first off, I'm going to talk about uh, a woman named Donna. Donna Whitford, who's going to talk for a little bit, is actually a patient and just a wonderful lady and has a really great story to share. And like we all have day jobs and night jobs, so her non-day job, or maybe part day job, uh, is actually in the fashion industry, clothing industry, makeover, kind of wardrobe, and, and all those good things. And um, so she enticed me to uh, a trunk show at her place. Uh, this is her website, or the website that she works off of in terms of her clothing line. And I only have two slides, and they're kind of hard to see, but you can just kind of Fuzz, fuzz your eyes and just kind of think of this very tranquil setting. You think you're in the Arboretum or something, or the Japanese gardens, but this is the entrance to her place. <laughs> I found the door, it was kind of marked that, yeah, in fact, that little, uh, is this working? That little, there we go, that little door back there, there's a white sign that was like, come on this way. So we went up there and had my daughter with us, and she kind of had her whole house rearranged. I don't know how she got all this stuff in there. This was her dining room, there's no dining table, in the back of my daughter's head. And she just, you know, it was a very um, relaxed, comfortable way to look at clothes, things that you may not see in a catalog that you've seen before, may have not seen in a, a department store, and just get a sense of what kind of fits well and fits right, and it was very unassuming and comfortable. So we're gonna let Donna come up and talk a bit. This is actually not at Donna's, this is at Discovery Park. So um, I'll toss this over to you for a little bit. All right, well, let me get the microphone. My name, is that good? Yeah. Okay. My name is uh, Don Whitford, and um, welcome tonight, and special thanks to Dr. Baumgartner for her excellent medicine that she gives us. And um, I am a cancer survivor, and um, my oncologist was Dr. Hank Kaplan, and he referred me to Dr. Baumgartner after I finished treatment with him, and I am forever in his debt for, and, and in, in his debt for um, getting me through that, and um, I had a host of doctors, actually, and they were all wonderful, and my story is that five years ago, um, I had a, a lifelong dream to start my own business. And uh, so I, I got involved in et cetera. And as I'm talking, Susan is one of my associates and she's actually gonna start putting on some clothes for you and showing you the, the line, the et cetera line. But um, one of my dreams was to become, um, have my own business. So I had my first trunk show with this et cetera line and about two weeks later I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And, um, if any of you are <clears throat> familiar with hearing those words, you have cancer, you know what that feels like. And um, I had a good friend at the time, Marilyn Richards, who was also a cancer survivor, and she became my cancer coach. And she said, I want you to focus on the things you can do. And one of the things I really, really wanted to do was stay in the business, to keep doing the business. Because I had a day job, which I wasn't really thrilled about. But I really love the clothes, and I love doing something fun. And um, so I stuck with it through, you know, four months of chemo, and <coughs> well, first the mastectomy, and then the chemo, and then the um, reconstruction. So it was about a two-year process. But I kept selling clothes. And 
one of the perks of selling great clothes is you get to wear great clothes. <laughs> and um, what I also learned is that when you look good, no matter how awful you're feeling, people respond to that. And, and I felt so out of control at times with having to see so many doctors and having to do so many different things to get better. Um, this was something I had control over. I could dress well. You know, my hair might be falling out. I might not have eyebrows or eyelashes, but the hair is still growing on my legs. I have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, my hair is falling out of my head, but it's still growing on my legs. So anyway, um, I kept doing that. Every infusion appointment, I, I, was, I did infusions every Friday for about four months. And every time I went to an infusion appointment, I dressed up. I didn't wear my ugly sweats. Dressing up gave me a sense of power. It, it gave me personal power. So I, I just want to share that with you. That's, that was my experience. And, and you know, today I'm five years cancer free. Susan continues model some of the great clothes we have. Um, I'm going to actually pass out this handout, um, which was passed on to me by one of my fellow et cetera consultants. And um, I just want to make just one point of view. First impressions, if you, if you don't realize this, within 17 seconds, someone, someone has formed an impression of you. Even doctors. When you have cancer, you want the best treatment possible. I dressed to the nines before I saw my oncologist. I mean, people respond to you differently. When you, they do. I mean, it, it's sad to say. I mean, I grew up in the hippie era. And I never wore makeup and I had straight hair and I wore granny glasses and, and ragged jeans. And my mother would say, oh honey, cut your hair. And I would say, I was like, what the hell do you know? I mean, that's really what I wanted to say. But, you know, my mom died a number of years ago, but, you know, I was hearing her when I was going through this hard time, you know, like, dress up, get your hair cut, put on some makeup, you know, fix those eyebrows. <laughs> just, just do it. And the, 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 the incredible thing about um, taking that personal care of yourself and for yourself, it, it's just a wonderfully, wonderfully spiritually renewing, actually. I, I find it spiritual. And when women come to my home for my trunk shows and I show them clothes, which Susan is continuing to model, and Lori's going to get up too. Um, I am not. I want you to feel good. I want you to be happy. I don't want to sell you something you don't want. I want you to buy stuff that makes you feel fabulous. I want you to look fabulous. Um, I'm not here to sell clothes. I'm here to tell you that it's important for you to take care of yourself. You know, because this is the only path we're going to get. Sometimes there are um, dips, in the, dips in the path that move like and roller coasters. <laughs> crevice, a crevice. And, um, you know, this is, this is it. So I continue to sell clothes, and sometimes it's a lot of work, but I have met some of the nicest, most wonderful women, and they've become really good friends. So um, that's another thing I want to, you probably already all know this, the well-dressed person wears clothes that complement her physical characteristics, coordinate color, fabric, and pattern, fit properly. That's a big thing. I used to wear clothes that were too big, most of us do. Even if you're full figured, having clothes that so many women make the mistake. I used to love that show, What Not to Wear. Oh, that's my favorite show. But I mean, if you're full figured, wear something that fits, get a good tailor. Um, a lot of our clothes, I, I love our clothes because they are engineered really well to flatter the female form. The designers we have really pay attention to that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Susan to introduce our next person. But after 
um, our little program here. You're welcome to come up and try the clothes on. And happy to ship, you know, just, I brought a lot of coats, a lot of sweaters. We have wonderful, um, I, would, I would call them pieces that are, oh, show them that jacket you have, Susan. The pink one hanging off the whiteboard. They're conversation pieces. If you start out with your column of color and then come out, people will notice you and say, where did you get that? And that's, I mean, I looked at it, that Pepto-Bismol pink on the hanger and I went, like, But Susan puts it on and it, it's really beautiful. Beautiful. So, thank, well, you. thank you. And actually I'm wearing one of your pieces too, oh, I must yes, say. Yes. I like plant color. So, um, yeah, afterwards, please feel free to come up and mingle and, and look at the clothing line as well. So, we're, we're not done with Tommy yet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Moving on, we have uh, Hannah with us today, the makeover maven. This, I just love that. So snappy. The alliteration. So if, you had, if your name was Mary, that would be Mary the Makeover, but that sounds like maybe that's too much. So um, she does have a website, she has business cards, she has Facebook, there's lots of ways to reach her, we can um, demonstrate later. I'm going to take you on a real quick journey, since um, you may not know this, but all three of us had some major technology problems about an hour and a half ago, or maybe midnight. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of all from scratch, and we had videos, we had kind of all the deep, dark secrets of the closet spilling out on video with voiceovers and special effects, poof, they're in the ether. Uh, at least one computer crashed and burned. Yeah. Maybe not burned, just it's frizzled. Burned. And so, so this is really put together very quickly. And um, if you want to see future videos, you know it. It's going to be in a Vimeo website. So stay tuned for that. So three brave ladies who are sitting in the very front row here, uh, Martha, I mean Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to that later. And June and Julia. And uh, these three ladies have all finished a year, many for change, have done an incredibly awesome job. But as they know, that's just really the beginning. This is just a stepping stone to the next. So they're not stopping. We had the privilege of um, living in their closets for a little while, in their kitchens and other places. And it was really a fascinating experience. It's humbling, it's exhilarating, we had fun. And just a couple slides for each of them. So this is actually Sheila's house, but uh, I really think she's the alter ego of Martha Stewart. Because you know, we walk through the door, and what do we see in her kitchen? But this lavish spread spread of food, and it's actually a little kind of a homemade gingerbread house or something. Oh my God! You know what were you expecting, the queen? <laughs> So we, were, we felt very honored, and you don't see the other, you know, there's one bottle of wine, but there was wine, and it was, you know, I, I think it was two hours before we actually went into her closet, so that was fun. And then she had her assistant, her kitty cat, who lives in the closet, and was, first of all, freaked out, and then totally fascinated. What were we doing, piling these clothes on the floor? And uh, her clothes, of course, are his clothes. So that was really a lot of fun. Then we got to June. So you have heard of the, the plate method? You know, thinking about food in your plate. Well, I think she's invented the cup method, and really, these little critters at the bottom of the cups. We had coffee, and it was it was really unique to see this. You know, you're drinking, and then this little animal appear as the liquor goes down. So that's that's the cup method. And then she also perfected a new sleeping technique. This goes back to her second lecture with Dr. Chang, and you may not know I photographed this. Um, but she had this cute, <laughs> the cutest little mobile hanging in her bedroom, and I thought. Man, she's counting sheep. There's a black one, and just it was so cute. So she's figured it out. She knows how to relax. Um, then Julia. Oh, Julia was a fascinating experience. And let me tell you, we were being watched at all times, even though Julia lives alone. At the end of the hallway is her cat <laughs> staring at us, baffled. Like first of all, it didn't appear for a little while, and then just was perplexed. What the hell are we doing in her bathroom, in her closet, her bedroom, in these private places that no one goes? And then on the side, you know, um, I just was very mesmerized by your family members. Some of them maybe um, not with us anymore, but, uh, but. Uh, actually, he's the one with my brother who died. It's actually not. Oh, okay. So these are family members, and I really, I think that's Julia right there. Is that true? Yeah. So we were being watched by a lot of people at her place. And, you know, so this was, this was a show and tell. So um, 
that's it. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it to briefly do an intro, and then we're going to do a mini runway. So, yeah. Thank you. Hi, ladies. How are we all doing today? So I have my three brave volunteers. Ladies, could you stand for me and just make a nice little line right here? So I don't have any great runway music. I could go, mm, mm, mm. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to kind of, I'm going to talk about you guys. Just take a quick little strut, nice and slow down the quick, slow, quick, slow. Right, yeah, go for it. Knock your socks off. So this sassy lady here, right for the camera. She's got herself a nice tulip skirt with a nice fitted uh, asymmetrical jacket. Super casual pieces that are put together in a way that make it look a little more formal with these kick and red shoes. Hello. Um, okay, and we have our next. This is our Bellevue hot mama right here. <laughs> she's got her nice pencil skirt and her peplum top, emphasizing that tiny little waistline she's been working on. Hello, mama. Okay, how on back. And this is our office casual look with the MC Hammer pants. They're coming back, people. Coming back. I'm obsessed with these pants. These replace a much beloved and well-worn pair of palazzos that I made her toss. God bless her. Um, comfy, casual, cute, easy to wear. Ladies. Thank you so much for being so willing to be my guinea pigs. Excuse me. Yes. Can they do one more walk? One more turn on the catwalk, <laughs> oh, ladies. One more turn. I know you want to. Come on. <laughs> Get up there. Woo! We didn't need a catwalk. Yeah, make, make a cat. Give me the. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shake that, those hips, baby. Yeah. I'm too sexy for my cat. Oh my goodness. Your turn. Pop on up. Yeah. Beautiful. Give him a pose. Oh, pose. There you go. All right, you're up next. Give him a nice pause at the end of the runway, my friend. Yeah, that red color looks amazing on her. I want that sweater. <laughs> if I steal pieces from your wardrobe, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yay, everybody, round of applause. <laughs> so these three lovely ladies are actually the beginning of a new chapter in my life. I have been working in retail for, oh gosh, 16 years. I'm older than I look, ladies. Um, and I started out at the Bon Marche High Board when I was 14. So this has been a long time coming. I have spent most of my career in uh, fashion and have a degree in theater performance, but I'm working on a secondary degree in apparel design. So not only have I been working as a costume designer, a uh, salesperson, a personal sales for my personal friends, I'm now kind of stepping into this new world of, oh, we're gonna get the really terrible slideshow I made on my cell phone because my computer died. Um, wonderful world of uh, wardrobe consulting, which for me was a natural extension of what I was already doing um, through my work in retail. I currently work in Nordstrom in the lingerie department, and boy, let me tell you, that is an eye-opening experience. You want to see some, some vulnerable but brave ladies, you work in, you work in lingerie. So um, what I'm kind of all about is Women go through this thing in their life where you know you're young, you're invincible, everything is awesome, and then you hit being a lady, a woman, and you're like, wow, this is different. It's harder. You're facing with new challenges, all these kinds of things. You get wrapped up in your career, your family, whatever it is. And for me, uh, it was work. I work on average about four jobs at all times. So uh, I got very uh, depressed for a while, and I gained about 65 pounds. And I've recently lost, oh, I think I'm, let's see, I think I'm up to 37 pounds lost in the last six to nine months. So I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, it's been a real challenge. It was one of those things where I woke up one day and I looked in the mirror and I said, oh my God, I'm A, my mother, which was terrifying, uh, and B, I'm hiding who I really am. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of crazy. You know, but instead of like, you know, letting my little freak flag fly, I was hiding behind these baggy clothes and things were really unflattering because I felt horrible. And it showed in my work, I wasn't excelling. I was drifting around, hopping from job to job. I was unsatisfied. I felt in my relationships like I was not beautiful enough. Um, <laughs> which is not true, and so it's taken a lot of work to get where I'm at now. And I see every day these women 
who come in and they're experiencing the same thing, you know? And I just want to squeeze them and say, you're awesome. So this is my little squeeze to all of you. Okay, so my goal is to love every size, every shape, and every woman. And that's something that's really been missing, I think, in retail and in the fashion world in general. It makes me mad, so I'm on a mission to change it. Okay, let's talk about some wardrobe no-nos. This is something that these lovely ladies, they let me come into their house and obliterate, and I do mean obliterate, their current wardrobes, right ladies? <laughs> right? So uh, I'm pretty sure between you two, there was probably an entire truckload of clothes that went to the Goodwill. <laughs> It was intense. Um, so, in fact, we had to do two, two trips for you because it was so <laughs> much clothing. Six hours, people. Six hours. So, obviously, the first one on the list, it, well, it seems obvious, but it's not. Most clothing that you want to get rid of are the ones that don't fit, and yet they're the ones we hang on to, you know? It's kind of crazy how that works. Anything you haven't worn in 12 months, chuck it because you're never going to wear it. You know? You had some of those in there. I saw that. Yeah. Um, if you want to, do a clothing swap with your girlfriends. That's some of the best ways to get free new clothes. I love doing clothing swaps. So, if it's more than 10 years old, get rid of it. You're never going to wear it, and it probably doesn't fit. Um, the, going back to the fit situation, and you were talking about this, it, it doesn't feel good when you're trying to squish into something or an ideal of who you used to be. Be who you are now, you know? And I think that's, for me, the biggest challenge was saying, you know what, I'm pretty awesome. I, I should be dressing awesome as well. And I shouldn't have to say to myself, well, I will someday fit back in that, you know? Because I don't fit in my personality from 10 years ago. So I want to be who I am, fit who I am, and be awesome. Anything yellow, stained, ripped, or missing buttons are not functional, chuck it. Or get it remade. But most clothing, not worth getting remade. Let's talk, you know, let's be real. Most of it is inexpensive, fast fashion. Toss it, buy something else. Novelty sweaters. <laughs> I love you. I have experienced a lot of novelty sweaters over this experience. Lots of Christmas and Halloween and all kinds of crazy holiday sweaters. There's a reason I do not love these. 90% of the time, they're a really terrible shape and they're just like big squares, right? And also, you're not the shining star of this outfit. Your crazy sweatshirt is. I want to see your lovely face and other people do too. Don't hide behind a weird kitschy sweater that makes you somebody cool, be somebody cool, and you know people are gonna really respond to that. Um, logo tees, I personally feel really offended that people want me to advertise for free, um, but also I feel like a lot of times logo tees read uh, very, very juvenile, and it was totally appropriate when I was like 18, 17, 16, and I was like, yeah, the gap! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am my own awesome brand now, you know, and all of us are. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, be free advertising. So uh, anything with no shape, anything baggy, um, unless it's intentionally playing with proportion, get rid of it, man. It just makes you look like a tent. Don't be a tent. Come on. Uh, any, any more than two, and there are some exceptions to this rule, like basics are really great to keep, but if you have like 16 of the same skirt, pair it down. Alright, memory clothing is tricky. So a lot of people have memory clothing. Some people are in love with the Huskies. <laughs> and, but you know, things like that. You, you want to you get, you don't want to have a museum in your home, you know? Donate the things that, that you aren't going to be able to wear. If you have t-shirts from every year of camp, from K through 8, toss them. Get rid of them. Um, they're just clogging up your closet and they're not doing you any good. Gift clothing, things that you were given that were purchased for you that are not attractive. <laughs> we experienced this with one of our dear friends here. She has a lovely friend who's very sweet and Barbara, Barbara poor Barbara. She sent you a lot of clothes and um, they were um, and I find that that's true of most gift clothing. Be gracious, accept the gift, and then if it's awful, donate it. You don't have to know. 
Um, bad bling. Oh, we experienced a lot of bad bling from everyone. It was very exciting. Bad bling means, and I should have put a picture in here of this because it's very uh, interesting. Bad bling, if you can make it with one of those little kits to get it, like, you know, a <laughs> store, yeah, you should probably not wear that. Um, and anything that's like, just really heavily overdone tends to distract again from our awesome face. Now, our, there are some <coughs> awesome blingy pieces, and I'm like, bring it out for the holidays, woo! Blingy butt jeans. <laughs> that was kind of played out in 1997. <sighs> let's, let's toss them an update, right? <laughs> Okay, so the big one, anything that is not flattering. And one way you can tell if something is not flattering, people go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and you're like, oh, what does that mean? Oh, no, no. Uh, and also, uh, you know, if you can't see your physical shape, it's probably not flattering. Bodies are awesome. I don't care what size you are. Show that sucker off. My mom is quite a bit larger than me and pretty round. But whenever she wears things that are ten, like bye, my sweet, we'll see you soon. Um, she she ends up looking bigger and sadder and frumpier. Whenever she wears something that has darts, has seaming, man, a lot. My dad can't take his hands off her, and she's like, Richard, stop it. <laughs> yeah. But it's really true. You want to show off those curves no matter where you got them. All right. So we're gonna kind of scroll down to one of my my specialties, if you will. I love I love this graphic so much. I'm like, this is the one on the left is really seriously what my grandmother was wearing when I fit her for bras like six months ago. It was her mother's bras from the 50s. I about passed out cold. <laughs> so you can really see a difference though in good underwear, good lingerie. Even in the 40s and 50s, big difference. So I'm going to talk about a couple of bra myths. I'm going to spend a lot of time on bras because, A, it's one of the things I do. I work at Nordstrom as a lingerie fitter. I also just finished my training as a mastectomy fitter, um, which is very exciting. I'm really excited about that. I, I got to chat with you a little bit about that. Prosthetics are an amazing, amazing thing. But, so, bra myths. There's a lot of them. And this is just a small portion of them. I spend all day, every day, looking at boobs. <laughs> Lots of boobs. All shapes, all sizes, it's amazing. I've never seen a collection of the same thing look so varied. It's amazing. So, one thing, molded cups. So everybody knows what a molded cup is, right? Where it's that foamy, circular thing like this, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you a visual. Cup, boob. <laughs> There's something wrong with these shapes. <laughs> they don't really go together. So have, how many of you have experienced the whole, like you can stick a cell phone in your bra situation? Anybody? Yeah, I thought so. I, I see you back there nodding your head at me. Yeah, that's horrible. Don't do that to yourself. It's so useful. It is useful. It, <laughs> you're killing me. No, this is what a person is for. t-shirts awesome now the thing is is everyone is a different shape so there are thousands of bra shapes for thousands of boob shapes you can't just walk into a store and be like oh that's cute and buy it no try that sucker on okay and I won't give you the whole spiel on how to fit a bra because you're gonna have to come visit me for that um, it's very time-consuming however if you can stick a cell phone in your bra don't buy it okay <laughs> Moldy cups are not sturdier than seamed cups. A, they break down a lot faster. B, you have to storm like a deck of cards and it's really hard on the bra when you like layer them like that, crushes them. Um, and I don't know about you, I'm not sticking like cute little balls of tissue paper underneath the cups of my bra, that's stupid. So uh, they tend to break down really, really fast. And if you are above a triple D, uh, moldy cups tend to just kind of let you go. <laughs> Southeast and Southwest, not good. We want to go do North, ladies. Okay, so seamed cups shove. Sometimes, yes, this is actually true. However, how many of you layer camisoles or other things, right? I don't know about you, but I almost always layer. Seamed cups are going to give you direction, yay. Uh, they're going to give you lift, double yay. And they're not going to break down as quickly as a molded cup because the shaping is built in. Sort of like a corset from back in the day, right? All those curved seams give you that tiny little wasp waist. Same thing with a bra. 
and there are hundreds of seamed bra shapes too. So if you've never found one that fits, come hang out with me for an hour and I swear I will find you one that works. There's a whole crazy mad science behind it. Okay, tight band. This is the one I fight the most. Let me give you another visual. You ready for this? Here's your boobies. Here's your band. Here's your body, right? So if your bra band is loose, guess what happens? It crawls up your back, which makes what go down? <laughs> Lock it in, ladies. So keep that band nice and tight. You want it parallel to the floor. You don't want to be able to pull from the center back more than mm, that much. Okay, I know it's shocking for a lot of women because they're like, oh, it feels so tight. However, I don't know if anyone's experienced this. What happens is, is when your band starts crawling up your back and your band starts going down, these underwires start shifting and chafing. Horribly painful. Uh, I, for a long time, didn't know I was wearing the wrong bra size, and I was like, why am I bleeding? <laughs> because my bra didn't fit. Nobody ever told me. So, and bra bands are not sized by inches. They are ranges of inches. So it's very confusing. Lots of super top secret math involved. Come visit me, I'll help you out. Um, the alphabet ends at D. Well, ladies, I wear a double F. Does anybody know what a double F is? Anybody? Okay, so here's how it works in America. D, E, no, lies. D, double D, triple D, quad D, five D. That's how Americans notate their bras. Europe, D, E, F, G. And in between, is there a double F? Oh yeah, double G, double H way over here on the other side of H. So bra cuffs, the biggest I think I've ever seen was a double K. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. I needed a drink after that one. Um, so most bra makers don't make bras above a double D or a triple D. Victoria's Secret is a great example of that. Part of the reason is it's extremely expensive. You have to do all kinds of new structures, you have to work on seaming and fit a lot more. You can't just slap that sucker on somebody and let it look good. You actually have to, you know, work hard at it. So a lot of places don't do it. Um, the average fit that I do is a 34G. That's half a size bigger than me. Not much, I'm not that big, really, when you look at me proportionately. What people don't understand is that the underwire is what determines the cuff size, not what's happening over here, right? Ignore this. Wherever your boobie starts on the side of your body, where it literally starts popping away from your chest wall, if your underwire is not behind that, your cup's too small. So you've probably experienced the underwire going <laughs> popping out, or even worse, digging in. You get the stabbing in the side boob, that's horrible, right? So uh, the alphabet keeps going. I think the largest bra that we can special order is an M. I have yet to meet that customer, but we can do it. So come hang out with me. Uh, I'll show you the magic of, of a fancy bra. Bras last forever. Lies. They all probably start dying and the larger you are, if you take really good care of your bra and hand wash that sucker every time and rotate it every 24 hours, you can probably make your bra last a year. Most bras die between six and nine months. The more bras you have, the longer they last because you can rotate them and your elastic doesn't get overly stretched out and your band doesn't shift and change. Um, it's a tricky one because bras are expensive. So it's, you know, people try to make them last as long as possible. And I get that, I'm poor. You know, I'm like, McDonald's, all right, fine, I'll do it again. But uh, <laughs> I would much rather have breasts that are up and lifted and my clothes fit, my clothes shirts can go closed over the top of them. That was exciting, first time I could do that. Um, then, you know, be uncomfortable and in pain. What style, every outfit? Not true. A lot of women will be like, this is my favorite bra, it's the only one I'm getting, it's awesome. And then they come in and say, well, why doesn't it work with this shirt? I'm like, well, because your shirt's a different style. Like this, technically, not so good. But I'm out of regular, you know, low cut bras. I wanted something probably with a little more plungy. Girls, experiment. Clothing is awesome. Bras are just as awesome. Sometimes I want something really soft and relaxed and to go underneath the t-shirt and look a little more natural. Sometimes I want those suckers up to my chin. Five different bras. It'll do it. It's awesome. Uh, small breasts equals no bra. Uh, I have seen uh, saggy small breasts. It's not good. Um, don't do that to yourself. Uh, breast tissue over time stretches and relaxes. And, and, and small boobies can get just as stretched out and sad as big ones. And um, 
a lot of women think that they don't have to wear them because they're like, ah, oh, sweet, I'm tiny. But what you're doing is as you move around, the weight of your breast, even small ones, will pull on that tissue. And unless you're doing like, you know, lat pulls every day and working these muscles out, you're actually stretching the tissue here and can end up with these awesome little tiny guys that are going southeast and southwest. So, you know, give them a little love, a little support. Uh, big breasts equals ugly bras. I don't know about you, but you, can you see a little red here? Yeah? I love pretty bras. I hate ugly bras. I refuse. I don't own a nude bra in my whole entire wardrobe. Um, <clears throat> there are brands out there that make bras that don't even start in band till 36, which is awesome. It's a very nice full fit, and they don't even start in cup till G. Um, so you can get gorgeous full fit bras. You just have to know where to look. There's a couple of stores in New Village, and Nordstrom obviously carries them. But most people don't make them. Again, going back to that whole, it's expensive to make. So know somebody who knows where those stores are. And I can hook you up with some gorgeous, sexy lingerie. Oh, yeah. OK, and pretty cannot be comfy. This is probably the other thing that I hear the most, is women are saying, well, if it's pretty, it's not going to be comfortable. And I'm like, that's because you're trying to squish into something that's too small. <laughs> that's usually what happens. They see this gorgeous bra on the rack and they're like, I have to have that. I'm like, great, you can't have it. It doesn't fit you. Let's find you something else. And they throw a little fit and they get really upset. And I'm like, well, <clears throat> it's your choice, but um, I've got something else just as gorgeous for you that's actually kind of fit. So you can find pretty and you can find comfy and you can uh, be happy with both of those things. Back fat. <sighs> yes. This, this back fat situation right here is probably the second biggest complaint I get, no matter if the woman weighs 95 pounds or 275 pounds, okay? I get it all from everyone, and I get it. It's not attractive. Nobody loves it, but everyone has it. I say this, would you rather have a little back fat that only you notice, or would you have boobs down your waist? I mean, to me, I'd rather have them up to my chin, you know, and have an actual waist. Because when you lift those suckers up, all of a sudden you've got this really great silhouette going on underneath. So back fat, it's a, it's, it's a fact of life. However, shapewear can change your world. Um, there's some really great options now of really lightweight shapewear that are camisoles, that are slips, whatever, that you can wear all day long without shifting, moving, and that just <laughs> smooths it all right out. So invest in a couple good tanks that have a little bit of squish to them, and you'll take care of that problem real quick. Okay, that was a lot of info. How are we all doing? I can't hear you. Nice. Okay, so bra bands, we kind of talked about this already. This is an example of a terrible fit. You could stuff a small child in there. Let's not do that. So, your band should be snug, you should be low on the back, parallel to the floor which means if you were looking sideways at someone, their breasts at, at the band and the back of the band should be at the same level. Um, it should sit in your part. They do, the band does all the heavy lifting. Your shoulder straps should never, ever, ever dig into your shoulders. And if they do, it's your band's too big. Get rid of it. This is a great example of a poorly fitting bra on the left here. Check that out. Whew. Not only are you rubbing on your shoulder blades, but you're showing off this awesome little chunky monkey little section right here, right? Don't do that. If you drop that bra band, it covers all of that up, locks it in, and is way more comfortable. And it just looks really nice. Okay, here's my, here's my infographic for you guys. Um, but I really love this graphic because it really does show, the, the one on the left, totally what I look like without a bra. Not good. With a bra, ta-da! magic. I have gone back in time 10 years. And this really does happen. Uh, I get women all the time who are like, oh, you'll never get my breasts up to where they used to be. And I'm like, challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. So this is a perfect example of a great fit. This is an Alomi bra. And this particular bra is a 34 double G. So you can see it's a full fit, but it doesn't look giant, right? It's this is called tacking, when you're laying flat right smack in the middle. Your chest wall, it should be laying right, the center of the bra should be tacking right up against the chest wall, laying flat. If it pops out at all, your bra's too small, go bigger. Um, this is a great example of a uh, great fit also because, I don't know if you've noticed that side boob situation, how many of you have had that happen, right? Where you're like, sick, my armpits are fat. <laughs> That's escaping breast tissue, lock it in. Move that right back in the middle where it ought to be. You're gonna look a lot 
fuller, your shirts are gonna close better, and you're not gonna have that weird armpit zhuzh, right? <laughs> so, this is a three-part cut. One, two, three. And you can see that seam coming right at the middle there. That is where you get all your lift. So this little seam running diagonal is where you get all the direction. And it is pointing you, guess where? To the middle, where it should be. It's awesome, this bra is amazing. Uh, it's an older style we used to have, but we have several that are similar. And this one comes with a garter, what? <laughs> <laughs> so this is my fantastic model. This lady's blowing up like whoa right now. Super famous model because she's, you know, a size 16 and she's smoking hot, right? Um, it's kind of a revolution. We're seeing this happen more and more now in the fashion industry and I cannot be more stoked. We got a long way to go. But she looks healthy and happy and like, damn girl, right? So we're gonna talk about shape. This is the biggest thing I think that people struggle with when they go shopping. Because they see all these really cute, trendy styles and they're like, oh, I'm gonna try them all, they're awesome. And then they put on a bunch of stuff and they're like, ugh, that looks terrible. And it's usually because they aren't aware of their own shape and the shape of the clothing that they're trying to put on their bodies. Um, so uh, these are the most common figure types. I think there's a couple others, but that's too much info. So basically, you've got your circle or apple, you've got your triangle, your trapezoid or pear, your rectangle, and your hourglass. Obviously, everyone always talks about the hourglass, but the hourglass, the hourglass, the hourglass. And, and part of that is like the whole Marilyn Monroe thing, you know, it's the ideal, whatever. But I personally absolutely love the pear. It's my personal favorite, so. So a great way to tell kind of what shape you are, this infographic is fantastic. Where is your weight? So the apple kind of carries it more up and central. Like think kind of pot belly with boobies. Or you can be an apple without any boobies, which uh, is sort of like a cousin of the pear. What's, what's, what is that, a plua? <laughs> um, but the apple carries most of her weight up front and tends to have smaller legs and smaller arms and just very centrally located. The pear tends to carry most of her weight in her hips and butt and lower stomach. Um, like I said, this is my personal favorite. Um, the hourglass is fairly proportioned where she carries her weight. She tends to have a, uh, hips and breasts and shoulder ratio that are very equal and a smaller nipped in waist. And then the rectangle, which I think is one of the most common shapes um, in my opinion, uh, is it's kind of equally distributed. She's very straight up and down, think flapper-esque in that straight square um, kind of figure. Um, so yesterday I was wearing this up and I was like, oh, hey, yeah, I guess I'm an hourglass. Um, so you can kind of see, if you take a picture of yourself, this is a really great way to tell where you hold your weight. Um, clothing can alter that, so we'll, I'll show you that. Um, but if you were to stand there and take a selfie, right, in your undies, and then draw a little line around it, it would give you a really good example of what your actual figure type is. And I totally recommend doing that. Um, you can see that this particular outfit that I was wearing really plays up the fact that I do have the smaller waist and the wider hips and breasts ratio going on. That is my favorite look. I really love the 40s and 50s, as you can see. Um, and uh, I, but I can play with those proportions knowing what my shape is and then going shopping and going, okay, wait, is this trapeze top going to make me look like a giant boob? Probably. So, um, okay, so here's some more lovely people uh, that were here today modeling for us. So you can see that this shape is, is fairly square, although I suspect that if she was facing more forward, we would see more of a waist and she'd be closer to a uh, hourglass. Um, this is a really great circle, or it could be a rectangle. This coat's hard, it, it kind of tricks the eye, but I think she, she's more of a circle or the apple. And this lovely volunteer is definitely more of a triangle. She's broader at the top, and if she were standing feet together, she'd come to a nice little point at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> so here's a great example of turning the rectangle into an hourglass. Nipping in that waist, right? Emphasizing the curve of the bust line and the hip, boom. That's pretty hot. I love it. Um, our apple, look how sexy and svelte she looks just by creating a waistline with some seaming, some ruching, and really playing up the fact that she has the broader hip and the waist. I love that. I think it's gorgeous. 
Um, okay, and here's our lovely little triangle and her super fantastic coat, uh, which, because the hem is flared, balances out these awesome broad shoulders. She can carry off really tailored looks really, really well because she's strong shouldered. Um, and one of the tricks for, for people who are strong shouldered to want to look, a lot of them tend to feel a little less feminine is the response I've got from a lot of women who have strong shoulders is to find details and things that are softer and floatier at the hem and draw attention down away from that um, rather than emphasizing the shoulder. So here's a couple of style guidelines for the fashion challenge. Um, it's tricky uh, when you go shopping by yourself to know what to look for, and a lot of it is trial and error, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, emphasizing the waist is always a really great place to start. Even if you feel like you don't have one, you can create one. Illusion is your friend. You can create one with movement, with pattern, with seaming, with belts, with accessories. It's amazing the multitudinous ways that you can create a waist. Love it. Um, also, shapewear is a really good friend of yours if you are really concerned about it. Um, you can embrace color and pattern. I don't care what size you are, embrace pattern and color. I know lots of women who feel unattractive and they wear only black because they think it's the only thing that's chic enough for them to look attractive in. And most people honestly don't look good in black. They look really good in color. They look good in pattern because it distracts from the things we don't love about our, our figure types. And it also brings like some life to the face, especially if you don't wear a lot of makeup. Throw some color on your top and bam, we're going to see a whole new you, you know? Um, if you're heavy breasted like I am, I'm pretty, pretty full up there. Uh, V-necks are great. Bateau, which is the wide boat neck and portrait necklines are really lovely because what they do is they create this strong vertical line and, and helps us kind of draw a vertical line up to our face so that people, instead of going like this, go like this, right? Like, hello, buddy, up here, thank you. Um, those, those necklines will be really useful. They also tend to make people who are shorter with heavier chests look taller. Yay for me. Um, if you're smaller breasted, uh, you can get away with a lot more stuff up, up top and you can create this illusion of a chest by looking for detailing, ruffles, pleats, higher necklines, especially too if it's paired with a narrower, more petite frame. Uh, you can really emphasize uh, the decolletage with some really fun stuff. And that's not to say you can't wear any of those other things. I, I hate to say rules, I like to say guidelines because rules are meant to be broken. Um, I have been shocked often by things. I'm like, oh wow, I really like that. I mean, I didn't think I would. I love that. I love being surprised. Volume can be your frenemy. So volume is tricky. Um, our lovely lady who had to leave earlier, she had these wonderful palazzo pants that she loved for many, many years. But when she was wearing them, they were so wide, and her smallest part of her was her bottom half, that literally what it was doing was making her from her widest part, it was hanging straight down and making her this giant rectangle, right? As soon as I brought in that leg at the bottom of her palazzo pants, she literally looked like she'd lost like 25 pounds. It was really surprising. And it showed off her killer legs that she'd been hiding for, from us forever. Um, volume can be tricky. Now, for me, when I wear tops that have like those cool butterfly flutter wings that I keep trying to wear because they're adorable, they do not look good on me because what it's doing is it's drawing this really vertical line right across the widest part of my chest, right? And then that's shortening me also by, by drawing the attention back down to where my bust line is. So it's all about playing with proportion in volume. And so like, let's say, let's say I wanna wear a giant poofy skirt. I probably shouldn't pair that with a giant poofy top, right? Because then again, I become this crazy huge box. No, not good. Give yourself some curve. So the two-thirds rule, anybody have a guess what that is? Anybody, anybody? Okay, check this out. So I think you're a great example, come on. So two-thirds rule, we've got, a, if it were me, I'd shorten this just a smidge to give us more of that rule, but two-thirds rule. Basically you wanna have two-thirds of one look and a third of another, because what happens if you smack somebody right in the middle, it makes them look whiter, right? And it emphasizes the whitest part of our tummy. This right here is doing a couple things for you. It's nipping in your waist, it's giving you a really nice curve, it's hiding the tummy, which we love, right? Yay! And then making your legs look super long. I mean, they are, anyway, so tall. But, I mean, it's making you look, runway model, what? So, 
Love it. And then we're also creating a V-neck with this awesome accessory. But she's, if she wanted to rock just the boat neck, she absolutely could. She's got nice wide shoulders. You know, and so that plays off the bottom of the peplum here by giving her that, that matching width. And you can see that whew, nice little curve, right? How gorgeous does she look? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, two thirds is awesome. If you're gonna do one look on top and you want it to be your longer half, make it, not half, your longer two thirds, make it your longer and then do something short on the bottom. Or flip flop it, do your two thirds on the bottom and one third on the top. Humans like three. I don't get it. It's just who we are. Um, all right, ruching. Pleats can hide a multitude of sins. So can seeming. Anything with seeming is going to be your friend. Like um, in a princess seam jacket like we saw earlier, that really just draws our eye into that curve. It makes us look very, you know, thin, honestly. Um, when you see like those mid-90s jackets, right? The ones that like molders, mold right? Molder wire, they're like, Phew straight down. She looked pretty wide and that woman was tiny. Scully. Scully, thank you. <laughs> I don't watch enough TV. Um, you want to create that illusion of curve and, and um, emphasize the fact that you're, you're going somewhere rather than out. Um, I love stripes. This trick with stripes is to find the one that works for you. A lot of women who are larger stay away from stripes because it's hard to look at oneself and see the strips kind of curving rather than going straight, right? Um, so one way to get around that is to find a gradiated stripe that starts small and gets bigger or vice versa or kind of mixes and matches, right? You don't want like big black, big color, because then all we're doing is drawing vertical lines across the whitest part of us. And you can mix and match your stripes with plaids, with dots. I challenge you to experiment with multiple textiles and multiple patterns. Stick in the same color family, same color family, different patterns. It's beautiful. You'll love it. Um, belts are the best accessory. You guys know I absolutely love belts. You can draw so much attention to your tiny little waist that you've been working so hard on with a belt. And it's great because a lot of people think, oh, I can't wear that. It's, you know, right around my middle. Everyone has a waist. Whether your waist is here, whether your waist is here, whether your waist is here. When you bend over to the side, and you can see this little cur curve here, right? That's the smallest part of my personal waist. So I always set my belts right there, okay? That is a really, really great way to say, hmm, where should I put my belt? Bend over, it'll tell you, it's genius. Um, the other way to have that nice two thirds thing going on, put a little belt right underneath your bust because it's that empire waistline that is really, really quite flattering of most women, but you don't necessarily have to wear something that's diaphanous on the bottom, like a lot of those tops, right? And you end up looking pregnant, not good. Um, if I threw a little belt or something cute around here, I would end up having super long legs for days, and then ta-da, showing off this awesome rack, right? You can totally do that. Uh, belts are amazing, and they're great too because you can throw them on oh, outerwear, sweaters, like I love this sweater, it's not very dressy, but I'm cold. If I threw a little belt over the top, I'd have a complete ensemble. So easy, it's the world's easiest accessory to roll out the door with. If you're like, I have two minutes, what accessory do I put on? Grab a belt, okay? And here's the biggest rule, and this is where I think most people struggle. Dry everything on. Even if you think, oh my god, that's heinous, I will never love it. Put it on. You'll surprise yourself. Did you guys try on stuff that you were like, I hate it, and then you bought it, right? Multiple times. You were just like, meh, okay, I love it. It's true. We surprise yourself. We have ourselves locked into these preconceived notions of who we are and what we look good in. And 90% of the time, we're wrong. Totally. And if you aren't sure, get a buddy. Because your buddy will be telling you the truth. She'll be like, oh, girlfriend, do not buy that. Or she'll be like, thank God, I've been hoping you would put something like this on. It's amazing what buddy shopping will do for you. So I love, I love this graphic so much. Another plus size model is kind of coming up. We don't look at naked images of women that are normal sized. I hate to say plus. I think most people under size 12 are actually light sized. Um, <laughs> but she is a fantastic example of what I like to, to call like the the average woman. She's also a size 16. She's stunning. This woman wears an H cup and she is, I mean, I want to look like that. 
I mean, a lot of airbrushing goes into that, but I, I wouldn't mind a little airbrushing, right? Um, she's stunning. And I think the quote by Marilyn is really, really true. I think that we spend so much time hiding and then shame of who we are rather than saying, you know what? I am sassy, I am sexy, and you know what? Yeah, I got some jiggly bits, but I'm gonna let them jiggle, you know? You gotta let them go, man. It is amazing how many women I see every day after a great profit or whatever, and they're just like, I didn't know I was so pretty. And I'm like, right? <laughs> You're gorgeous. Oh. So, I hope this was helpful. It's just a very quick introduction to a little bit of what I know. 16 years in the business, costume, you know, stuff for years and years, and making clothes for years, I mean, wedding dresses, all kinds of crazy stuff. I can't even possibly squish in the a vast amount of knowledge that there is to learn about when's every day I learn, you know, every day I'm always like, wow, that is something new that I did not know and I'm so excited about it. And I love to share that information. And every person and everybody is so different. I think my favorite ones are the women who come in and they're like, I hate everything. And then they leave and they're like, I look at the best I've ever looked, you know? I had one lady who was like 60, I think she was 67 who got a bra fit and she walked out of there with all these crazy push-up bras and all these sexy lazy things and lingerie and she goes, my husband's going to have a heart attack when he sees me. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, girl, get it. <laughs> so, I love working with women. I have such great passion about it, you know, and I find somewhere along the way we all sort of lose a little bit of who we are. And I want to help people find who they are through their clothing, through their own personal style, you know, and, and helping them I don't, I don't want people to be dependent on me forever. I want them to be like, I've outgrown you, girl. I know what looks good on me now. I would love to give people those tools so I can say, all right, spread the message. Go forth. Um, and so if you guys have any more questions or you want to talk a little bit about what I do, I can come annihilate your wardrobe. Absolutely. I can also help you shop for a new one that really suits who you are, where you are, and whatever size you are. Thank you so much, ladies. Something, something. So these ladies got to experience firsthand the brutality that is a wardrobe consult. It's really great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a name out of this basket for one wardrobe consultation session where I'm going to sit down, go through your wardrobe with you, and be like, okay girl, what are your plans? Let's talk about where you want to be, what's your fashion icon, what do you want to look like, all right? And then we'll go from there and we'll figure out a plan, but I will help annihilate one person's wardrobe. You ready? Donna, 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 Janice. Who is Janice? <gasps> I knew it. Bring me best friends. Oh my God. <laughs> Janice just joined the program. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, so happy. Yay, you were rocking it, girl. I can see you out there going. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. That's so great. what I'm going to need from you is your contact info, and we will work out a time that works for you and for me. Sure. And we're going to obliterate your wardrobe. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do. They're on the back counter right back there. And if there's a little sign of sheet too, if you want to put your name, phone number, and email, I'll put you on my little list. This is my contact. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I want to you want to draw another name on the back. Woo! This is like two for a hundred dollar certificate towards a piece of clothing at my next year. I'm gonna let you draw. Dale has at this. <laughs> That's so sweet. See, you can maybe talk to Don after. So some folks might have to go. We've gone a little late, but we're going to stick around for chit-chats, uh, surveying the wardrobe, chit-chatting with Hannah, with Donna, with myself, and have an awesome night. Thank you.